honored guests, distinguished guests, we welcome you. My name is Nan Hayworth, and I was privileged to uh, be a member of Congress in the 112th uh, Congress when the great Republican wave came in. And uh, one of my mentors, uh, and, and a mentor to uh, all of us, a policy genius, uh, Dr. John Goodman, uh, has uh, invited me to moderate this discussion as a member of the Goodman Institute Public uh, for Public Policy Research Board. Uh, we're awaiting our connection with uh, the 50th Speaker of the House, uh, whom uh, you know well, uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, and we're waiting for him to join us from Rome. First of all, I want to pick up on what John Goodman was saying when I first came on, and that is he and I have a relationship a uh, mutual admiration society uh, that goes back many, many years. I, I don't know of any single person spent more time trying to find a way to develop a decentralized, patient-oriented, uh, market-oriented system than John. And his work and the work of the Goodman Institute is just remarkably important. Um, I think that, that health care uh, is probably the greatest area of Republican vulnerability, uh, partially because historically uh, we've had leaders who refuse to think about it. Uh, and they do that in part because it's very hard. I mean, this is why John is so important. What John has done, I think, has begun to lay out the framework for a patient-centered model that uses modern technology. Uh, he's certainly been one of the leaders in helping us all understand about telemedicine about the potential for truly personal information. We have a potential to develop a, a personal portable insurance system which liberates you, puts you in charge, and which I'm convinced will ultimately save money. I think if we can get the individual back into the system with the right information, uh, we will probably reduce the cost of health care by about 40%, uh, which would be an enormous shift in our economy and a great potential for us to be even more competitive in the world. As of January 1st, it was illegal for a Medicare doctor to communicate by iPhone, by Skype, by Zoom, the way we're communicating right now uh, with a patient, except under very rare circumstances. So it almost never happened. Uh, and it was illegal by act of Congress. Well, the Trump administration had been working for quite some time to uh, to around the edges change this, uh, making what I told Seema Verma were baby steps in the right direction, but they laid the, the groundwork. And uh, when the virus hit, we had two things going for us. One, the virus created panic in Congress and the Trump administration had been laying the groundwork for fundamental change. And so Congress reversed itself and allowed uh, Medicare to uh, to use iPhones, Skype, Zoom, so forth to communicate with patients. And I mentioned Medicare, but those of us who weren't on Medicare were also affected because it turns out that Facebook and Skype and Zoom and so forth uh, probably violate the federal government's uh, privacy policies. And so none of us were talking to doctors the way we talk to our lawyers and accountants and other uh, professionals. I mean, the estimate is that one in three uh, doctor visits uh, do not need to be in the doctor's office. They could easily be from your home. Uh, physicians have said forever that, that half the people in the emergency room at the hospital don't really need to be there. A lot of that could be done uh, from the home. Uh, one thing you need to know, and this is important, is that every executive order that Trump has signed uh, every one of them can be reversed by, by the next president. When COVID goes away, your ability to talk to your doctor by phone or email goes away as, as well. So virtual visits are gone unless we have some permanent change in the law, which right now we don't have. What's the most important thing Congress can do to make the Trump health reforms successful? And I would say make them last. Yes, yes. It needs to make everything permanent. Your ability to talk to the doctor by phone, email, and Skype. The ability of your employer to put money into an account so you can have a direct primary care doctor that you can talk to at nights and on weekends. Um, the price transparency, uh, new regulations. Uh, the ability to have a flexible health savings account that meets the needs of chronic patients. 
uh, the ability of insurance companies to specialize in cancer care, diabetic care, and get really good at something instead of trying to be all things to all people. These, these things need to be permanent. John, I want to thank you for the wisdom you've imparted and for your incredible work, which is why I've been uh, so proud to support uh, the Institute for the years that I have. Uh, it, it, you are an amazing figure and you have influence at the very top of policy in ways that very few uh, individuals or institutes do. Well, we have quite an agenda set in front of us. Uh, there's some urgency between now and the election. And even beyond the election, uh, there is a lot that needs to be done. And um, if you'd like to learn more, uh, let us know and we'll do a one on one with you and uh, let you know what our plans are and what kind of help we need. And uh, if you know of others who should have been on this uh, on this uh, interview and would benefit from it, uh, let us know and we'll be happy to contact them. And uh, once again, thank you all for joining us. Mm -hmm.